Good day, my dear students. Today, lecture titled Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome, which is a very important lecture. Uh, it's an introductory lecture to two major and important lectures, Multiple Organ Dysfunction Syndrome and Chalk Lecture. By the end of this lecture, you have to be able to describe uh, the meaning of systemic inflammatory response syndrome, differentiate between different terminology, uh, sepsis, severe sepsis, septic shock, and systemic inflammatory response syndrome, identify the risk factors for the development of uh, uh, SEERS and sepsis, and discuss the pathophysiological mechanism of SEERS, and uh, identify the concept map and its related uh, mechanism and finally explain the most common care bundles for the patients with multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. Regarding the systemic inflammatory response syndrome, you have to know that is uh, an inflammatory response of all body system to a different type of condition, either infectious condition or non-infectious conditions. Uh, whereas in SEERS, there is um, some conditions predispose or uh, trigger or activate the systemic inflammatory response syndrome, such as chalk state or any state uh, associated with the high bulb perfusion. Uh, another condition such as um, a massive blood transfusion, uh, post-traumatic uh, patients, uh, uh, patients with brain injury or traumatic brain injury, uh, major surgery, uh, burned patients and patients with acute pancreatitis, all these patients at a risk for developing multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. So your patients considered in a sepsis state or uh, developed systematic inflammatory response syndrome if your, pa your patients has two or more of these following criteria. Number one, temperature, either hypothermic or hyperthermic. Number two, patient's heart rate. If the, your patient has tachycardia, respiratory rate, your patient has tachypnea and or with partial pressure of, of carbon dioxide tension less than 32 millimeter mercury. And finally, white blood cells count above uh, 12,000 or less than 4,000. In relation to severe sepsis, which is a condition the patient complains of hypoperfusion and hypotension. Hypoperfusion will predispose to serious life-threatening problems such as lactic acidosis, oliguria, and altered mental status. Then, septic shock. Septic shock means your patient has a potent hypotension. What the meaning of potent hypotension or persistent hypotension, which is a hypotension state not responding to IV fluid resuscitation and vasopressors. And finally, final terminology in this lecture is organ dysfunction, which means that the organ not functioning adequately. Regarding to the risk factors uh, predisposed to the development of sepsis include pain and distress, patient's immobility, or bedridden state, excessive intake of antibiotics, decrease in the patient's cough and the clearance function, uh, uh, presence of pressure ulcer or skin breakdown or wound, uh, burn, malnutrition, presence of urinary tract infection, the patient's on prolonged total parenteral nutrition, patients underwent splenectomy, patients on radiation therapy or chemotherapy, patients on immunosuppressive medications, patients with vaginal and perineal colonizations, patients with plenty of invasive device, 
and finally presence of invasive catheters. Regarding to the process of developing systematic inflammatory response syndrome, uh, which mainly occur in the patients with inflammation or infection, started with local response of the patient's body to invasive micro invasion of a microorganism or uh, to a local tissue damage or insult. This leads to activation of local inflammatory response for the patients, which activate the endothelial cell near the area of insult or damage. This activation of endothelial cell result in release of vasodilatory mediators. Example of vasodilatory mediators like nitric oxide, histamine, bradykinin, all these factors or all these mediators result in altered in coagulation and fibrinolysis. All these previously mentioned factors predispose to capillary refill on a vascular level and microvascular thrombi formation and tissue hypoxemia and finally impairment in the patient's vascular tone. So systematic inflammatory response syndrome developed after local inflammatory response syndrome, which is overwhelmed by different factors or different conditions, overwhelmed or deteriorated more due to the development of these conditions, unregulated inflammation, impairment in the patient's coagulation, impairment in fibrinolysis uh, process, maldistribution of circulatory volume. Regarding to the maldistribution, yani a maldistribution of circulating volume means in the, the, our body to overcome or to compensate the condition with the hypoperfusion, we have shifting of the blood circulation from non-vital organ to vital organ. What is the vital organ? Heart and the brain. Non-vital organ, other body organs considered as non-vital, except heart and brain. Finally, oxygen supply and the demand become imbalanced due to hypoperfusion and endothelial dysfunction will occur. This image illustrate uh, an algorithm for the pathophysiological changes occur in the patients with systematic inflammatory response syndrome, starting from uh, infection uh, due to tissue insult or injury, then inflammatory mediators are released, such as tissue necrotic factors alpha and interleukin-1 and interleukin-6. All these factors will develop in two major conditions. Number one, the neutrophil and the endothelium activation, which lead to oxygen free radicals increase, release of inflammatory mediators such as nitric oxide and other inflammatory mediators as mentioned before. The other uh, uh, predisposing factor to uh, the development of inflammatory mediators will result in coagulation activation platelet activation, dysfunction uh, of the uh, anticoagulant pathway, the intrinsic coagulation pathway, and finally impairment in the fibrinolysis. Impairment in the fibrinolysis will result in uh, GIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation. We will discuss this uh, condition in a future lecture, inshallah. And microthrombi formation, and uh, the development of endothelial injury. Endothelial injury and GIC and microthrombi will result in maldistribution of the blood flow and hypotension. And finally, all these factors will predispose to moods. We will discuss moods lecture. Moods means multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. So, Based on this algorithm, you have to know that if your patients developed systematic inflammatory response syndrome, your patients at risk to develop multiple organ dysfunction syndrome.
this concept map identify the how the patients with systematic inflammatory response syndrome can develop multiple organ dysfunction syndrome either due to infectious factors or non-infectious factors infectious factors like any source of infection bacterial translocation infection uh, microorganism in the circulations and as well as non-infectious factors such as severe trauma, multiple trauma, excessive tissue injury, ischemia and perfusion conditions, and prolonged or severe hemorrhagic shock, and finally patients with acute pancreatitis. Either inf infectious causes or non-infectious causes predispose to the development of systematic inflammatory response syndrome. What will happen after the development of systematic inflammatory response syndrome? <clears throat> you, you will find disseminated activation of leukocytes and systemic re re release of the inflammatory mediators, which, interact, uh, which interacts with the endothelium and responsible for endothelial damage or injury. And finally, apoptosis. After the development of systematic inflammatory response syndrome, three major complications will occur. First one, hemodynamic changes, which is characterized by generalized vasodilatation, myocardial depression, and intravascular pooling and redistribution of circulation, as we mentioned before. The second consequence of systematic inflammatory response syndrome is microvascular changes in a form of increased microvascular permeability which predispose or leads to tissue edema and arteriovenous shunting and obstruction of the flow and maldistribution of the circulation. And the third consequence of the systematic inflammatory response syndrome is defective oxygen used due to impaired extractions which result in abnormal function of the oxygen in our body and uh, predisposed to tissue hypoperfusion. All these factors finally predispose to the development of organ dysfunction, multiple organ dysfunction modes. Finally, this uh, table include our one bundle, initial resuscitation for sepsis and septic shock. As you know, PANDL means group of uh, intervention or actions to improve patient's outcome. This PANDL was developed by the Society of Critical Care Medicine and the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine 2019. The first one action is to measure your patient's serum lactate level. As you know, serum lactate level is uh, 0.5 up to 1 millimole per liter. Then obtain a cu blood culture from your patients before starting any antibiotics. After obtaining culture, then ad start administering uh, uh, broad spectrum antibiotics and then uh, uh, start administration of intravenous fluid resuscitation by crystalloid uh, such as normal saline or lacti lactated ringers uh, to improve the patient's hypotension condition and improve the uh, higher lactate level. The formula to calculate uh, the fluid resuscitation is uh, 30 ml per kilogram of body weight of your patients. So weight your patients, measure your patient's weight and then uh, uh, times by 30 to calculate the proper uh, volume required for your patients. Then the final uh, intervention or action to apply uh, the vasopressor medication to correct the patient's hypotensive state to maintain your patient's mean arterial blood pressure more than 65 millimeter mercury. How to calculate the uh, mean arterial blood pressure? The formula is uh, 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 patient systolic blood pressure uh, plus two uh, diastolic blood pressure divided by three.
uh, now we finish the lecture uh, and this lecture is very important now you know that if the patients uh, your patients develop the systematic inflammatory response syndrome your patients at a higher risk to develop multiple organ dysfunction syndrome which we'll discuss in the next lecture